Today I'm with Padma Gordon and she's got a book coming out um, that she's been working on for a while and I wanted her to share about it. Uh, I've worked with Padma in her business for a while and she is a counselor and a mindful embodiment teacher. So she works with individuals and couples, um, well, has been in, in person but has done a lot online as well and she also leads an online women's group. Um, among and also teaches some some online courses. So Padma, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me, George. It's so nice to be with you. Yeah. So I'm excited about your book coming out. You actually did a crowdfunding campaign for the book, and you already reached the goal for the for for the crowdfunding even during these times, which is re remarkable. Which uh, shows you that you have a community that's supporting you and that's looking forward to the book. So maybe you could tell us a bit about the book first. Sure. And I just want to say that I just I feel incredibly grateful and humbled by the, the outpouring of generosity, not only for my book crowdsourcing campaign, but for, you know, what's happening in the world. It's just it's very it touches my heart. It really does. Um, so. So the book. Yeah, the book. I feel like it's it's a very timely moment for this book because it's a book about relationship and it's called Being Together. It's going to come out this summer in July. And um, it's really, you know, the thing about relationships is relationship begins with um, you tending to yourself. The first relationship, the primary relationship is to yourself. And then how you are with yourself, how I am with myself is also how I am with you and how you are with me. So the book starts there. And then it's, it's really, though, a book about how to have a thriving monogamous long-term relationship yeah and that's been difficult uh for for decades <laughs> for, uh, but um especially <laughs> now when yeah when people are uh needing to spend a lot more time together um it's even more uh so uh, yeah tell us a bit about so this is really helpful the, the framing is you know we start with ourselves and then that extends out to the, those we're with. Um, so what does that mean, relationship with ourself? How do we cultivate that? Mm, that's a good question. Well, what I do is I spend time in nature and I practice meditation. You might practice yoga or whichever kind of internal discipline, qigong, you know, whatever is, whatever feeds you. So just really taking some time to be with yourself and tend to yourself. And it's really about loving yourself. So it starts with self-love because we can love others to the degree that we love ourselves. So doing practices and, and also just tracking into your inner dialogue, right? So if you're doing something, cheering yourself on. If you're being a certain way, if you're being generous, if you're helping out, say, in this moment, the elders in your neighborhood, then really appreciate yourself for that. Um, so gratitude is a great thing. And gratitude is one of the chapters in the book, gratitude, appreciation. And that really starts with ourselves and extends outwardly. Mm, it's beautiful. So um, the book, uh, tell us about it, kind of the, the genesis of the book, like what, what inspired you to, to, I mean, you've actually been writing uh, for years, so you have more than the material for probably several books, but, um, but yeah, tell us more about kind of what, what inspired this. Um, well, what inspired this was, is the fact that I've been in a relationship with my partner now, it'll be two years yeah. in June. And it's been one of these relationships that has really, um, it's been wonderful and beautiful and challenged me and made me, you know, turn and look in the mirror and look at myself. And, and, I've, and we've been really doing the work together, the work of relationship, the play of relationship, the dance of relationship. And I thought, well, if this is so challenging for me, and I'm someone who has worked on myself and is, you know, really committed to evolution, internal evolution, personal evolution, then wow, this this has got to, this is an edge. And we know it is, as you brought up at the beginning, George, you know, it's such an edge. And we have so few examples of thriving. And by thriving, I mean where people are happy, 
it doesn't mean they're in bliss all the time or they're just totally in love and la la land. No, it's not that. It's, wow, we are a team, we love each other, and we are, we are evolving each other together and giving ourselves space to evolve. So relationship as evolution is really one of the primary themes of the book. So, so that's really what started me on the journey um, of writing about this. And this is all brand new writing and all the writing I have done and all the reflection I have done has certainly gone into this because the book then speaks to my own experience, my own narrative is sort of one piece of the book. And then I have drawn from the work of longtime experts who have studied relationship for 40 years, like John Gottman and other people who are really, you know, have just been in it for a long time. So I'm drawing from research. And then I did personal interviews, I did primary interviews and interviewed people who, from my perspective, seem happy and people who have really stayed the course because that's one of the pieces is you will thrive if you stay the course which means you're staying in integrity with yourself as you move forward because there are plenty of us who stay in relationships for a long time that actually aren't working so to me that's not thriving yeah wow so say more about that what does that mean by stay the course and being in integrity with ourselves so if, you know, in the course of every relationship, um, there are challenges uh, and there are incompatibilities that come up. Um, you know, of course, in the beginning of a relationship, there's, there's a honeymoon period and um, everything seems to be, you know, oh, this is going to last forever. And, um, <laughs> and then, of course, you know, the, the little compatibilities start to emerge and we start to, as we get to know the person better and get to know ourselves better and and what we really want and what they really want. And uh, so how do we then, yes, this, it's a wonderful idea, this, this balance between staying the course and being in integrity or, or both that are uh, being sort of working together. So tell us more about that. Mm, thank you. And George, I can really hear that you're speaking from your own experience. Yes. I know, how long have you been in your Gosh, relationship? Uh, it's been 12 years. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So and we've impressive. certainly gone, had some big moments, you know, yeah. um, but we are, we're here, we're happy. So That's yeah. wonderful. Congratulations. It's, Thank you. Because it, it is, it's going through those, those big moments to me are, are the eye of the needle moments. You know, yes. will we get through this yes. or will we just yes. part ways yes. because we say, oh, it's too much, can't do it. And it's like the too much can't do it is, can I, can I really listen to myself? Can I do my own inner work? Because that's what it's about. We're in, we, we jump into relationship. You, met, you, you sketched it out really well. In the beginning, we're just in love, right? And part of that is, is uh, you know, the chemicals, neurochemicals that are flooding our brain, right? We're, we're just high on this love cocktail and it's great and it's bliss. And yeah, so I speak to that a little bit too, the neurobiology of love plays in a little bit. I just touch upon it, which of course is its own, it's its own book. So um, yeah, so we, we, we get into relationship and then things come up and we have to keep coming home to ourselves, which is why these practices and the connection that we have cultivated and are continually cultivating with ourselves is so important because what does it mean? Only, only you know and only I know inside myself, what does it mean to be in personal integrity? Because in the realm of relationship, we can, it's easy to slip into self-betrayal because it plays into our, our earliest wounds, right? Our early wounding. And this speaks to our, what's called attachment material in psychology, which I also, you can't write a book about relationship without <laughs> mentioning or delving into attachment to a certain degree. So it's really, it's a chance, relationship is a chance to evolve as a, an individual and together. And the truth is that we are stronger together. It's, it's actually easier in a certain way to be alone, right? Because we, we see, you know, all these, we see or we hear these stories of 
great meditators, great monks who have been in the cave and have been on the mountaintop. And um, if you watch my promotional video, it speaks to this. Um, and then you come home, you come down off the mountaintop and you get into relationship and then here's your stuff in your face right away. So it's a chance. It's an amazing container to both evolve and to heal, to heal those wounds that really, in my experience, can only be healed in relationship, either in an intimate partnership or in a, in a counseling relationship, a safe container, because that's part of it. Like we can thrive because we are held in a safe container, a safe container of what's sometimes called a two person system. We're in it together, right? I've got your back, you've got my back. And then we can take more risks. We can step further out into the world and offer ourselves because we know that someone's got our back. So it's, it's, uh, it's a big thing. And also just one more thing I'll say about that is that, you know, people tend, what I've learned and what in my experience and from my studies, my research over these last years is that people like being around happy couples right? Because it stitches back to if you had a childhood, and hopefully some people did, where there were two parents, and it was, it was solid. It's like, here we are, we're held, the king and the queen are in their place. And oh, I could relax, because all is well, the king and the queen, the mother and the father, or the two mothers, and, or the two fathers, because this just goes for People, two people holding the place, holding the place, and it creates safety. So you might just explore that. Oh, how do I feel when I'm around a happy couple? So. Wow, that's oh, there's a lot there, so and a lot to reflect on, and uh, kind of, I'm you know these archetypes, right, and this sort of very deep, um, sort of patterns of relationship that go back in our psyche thousands of years <laughs> um, and, and have evolved us as human beings. And this is why we thrive in certain ways. Um, and of course, with the modern times, like you said, um, it can seem easier to be single. Um, like you said, you know, the, the, the monk or the, the spiritual person out there doing the thing, but also these days, you know, the, the, the digital nomad, right? Like the, on Instagram, you see people who seem like they're, you know, living a lifestyle of freedom and they're, they're in like every, every two weeks they're somewhere else and, you know, taking pictures and like, wow, you know, if I were single, then I could do those things right now. Now, of course, with the lockdown, you can't do that, <laughs> but <laughs> which is ironic, right? Maybe it's just part of the lesson here. It's like, wait, hmm. but, um, but, but, you know, it's like a lot of the, um, that kind of, that kind of uh, glorification of singlehood, um, uh, sometimes you know doesn't doesn't acknowledge the fact that we still are human beings that evolved to be with other human beings um, and and to and to benefit from well the human touch with somebody that <laughs> that we can be you know in in lockdown together That's but right. um, but uh, so so actually I'd love for you to because you work with people who are both couples and you work with single people. Yes. Um, the book is probably better for for couples, I imagine, or for people who are in a relationship. But, you know, but maybe, maybe not. So tell us about that. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, I really, I wrote this book um, for people who actually probably are either young, say you're in your 20s or your 30s, and you're just the beginning of your relationship journey. Um, and you want some guidance because guidance is a little sparse out there in this arena, even though there are many, many wonderful books on relationship. Um, but I guess examples are a little sparse, real life, real time examples. And then I know at least in the community that I'm a part of here, there are many single people in uh, their forties and their fifties. And so I wrote this book for you too, because it's possible. So part of what I posit in the book is that relationship, having a healthy, long-term thriving relationship is possible for everyone, as long as you're willing to show up. And the show up part is a pretty big deal. 
The showing up means that you're willing to look at your stuff, you're willing to stop yourself in your tracks when you're getting triggered. And I'm speaking from my own experience, and I feel like, especially in this moment in time, I, my experience is that we are being asked to clean up our acts and to really interrupt our habit patterns and, um, and just really take a close look at who we are, what we want, and where we've been. Because everything is, uh, everything's on hold. External things are on hold. So I feel like in relationship, these are the places, and, and I'll say for myself, that I've really, I feel like I've become a much, um, a much more loving person and a much more gentle person. And it's really interesting because my partner is extremely gentle and I'm gentle and I'm, I'm also pretty intense. And I have had to, or have chosen to, and I'm choosing to really study him as part of being in a relationship, I'm studying you, you're studying me. How can I relate to you? It's actually a, a very, it's an act of generosity, it's an act of compassion, it's an act of kindness to actually relate to somebody in a way that is, uh, will serve them. And so that actually your communication reaches them because that can, it creates connection, it creates harmony. And if I'm just standing my ground and digging in my heels and wanting to be right, then that's not happening. And then we're, that's creating separation. And what I want, and then what my sense is that we as human beings want, is we want to experience love. We want to live with open hearts. We want to love and be loved. And, and it's scary. I get that it's really scary. And one of the chapters is on vulnerability. And um, because it's vulnerable to be in relationship, to really dive into love and to, to show yourself to another person. And yet it's, it's profound, it's intimate. And again, it's healing and it evolves us. So I really wrote this book for, for everyone and, and as much, probably as much or more for single people than for couples. But perhaps if, if you're a couple that's really struggling, this will definitely serve you. And if you're a couple that's really happy, you can just say, great, we're doing yeah. all the right things. Or, you know? or a couple that's content and you know, this book may help them to deepen uh, and thrive more um, because what you're bringing forward is a lot of the reflection that um, in relationship, we sometimes don't have time to do, you know, with, busy lives um, with just, you know, sometimes relationships become like, well, like, like teams, like you said, like we're a team, but then that sometimes the practicalities can take over uh, a lot of day to day, you know, it's like, <clears throat> oh yeah, who's, who's cooking, who's, who's cleaning, who's, you know, going to do this errand, who's going to take care of this or whatever. And it's like, okay, this is a chance to deepen uh, and to uh, do the work of personal growth together. And so I, I think that this book is, would be beneficial. I'm looking forward to it uh, myself. So um, did you have something like a snippet of the book you wanted to share with us? I know it's, um, you know, I, I don't know how much you're able to share at this point. Um, I can, I can read a little bit from the introduction. Um, yeah. Just give us a, give us a flavor of it. I'll give you a little snippet and um yeah. I just want to say that I'm, I'm super excited about this book and I'm excited to dive into revisions and um, gotten really great feedback from the various editors uh, that work for this publisher. So that's thrilling. Um, so let's see, I'm just gonna flip over to this. So let's see. Begins like this. Long-term relationships are an epic challenge for many of us. They call upon us to be real and to reveal our magnificence as well as our shadows to another person, rendering us vulnerable. Relationships invite us to be present and discerning. Ultimately, they can serve to evolve us into the best, most loving version of ourselves. 
over time, the possibility is for a committed relationship to become a spiritual practice, one in which you awaken to your true nature. If you stay the course and don't jump ship when you are tested and things get uncomfortable. Being in a long-term relationship provides a container for you to evolve into the person you were meant to be. Skip down. This is also true for Jen and Jay, where our story begins. Jen and Jay have been married for 48 years and have three adult sons. Throughout their relationship, Jen and Jay have had many ups and downs and even a brief period of separation. What has kept them together? There are lots of things, and among the most important are acceptance of one another, being able to laugh at themselves and each other's behavior, wanting what the other wants for themselves, and the practice of gratitude. Gratitude supports the flow of love, which sustains their relationship. Let's read a tiny bit more. Gratitude plays a key role for Jen and Jay in their small day-to-day -day interactions. In their relationship, Jen loves to cook, so Jay does the dishes. Jen told me about how she has consistently asked Jay to use hot soapy water and wears glasses while he washes the dinner dishes. So that you can see what you're doing, echoes Jen's lilting voice across the kitchen. Jay does not comply with her wishes, but Jen doesn't become angry with him. She simply smiles and without saying a word, she rewashes them to her satisfaction. Jen's thought is, I'm so grateful that he took the time to wash the dishes in the first place. So it's just a little bit of the wow. introduction. Thank you. And it's great that you incorporate, uh, you know, real stories and as well as research, as well as your, just your beautiful language. In there. So looking forward to this. Well, of yeah. course, we'll have the links in the description of the video to where people can follow you and find out and sign up for your newsletter so they can find out um, when the book is out. Um, anything else you want to share before we conclude, uh, conclude this conversation? Mm. No, I just, I just really, first of all, I thank you so much, George. It's wonderful to be with you. I really appreciate who you are and really acknowledge you for doing the work that you do on yourself and in your relationship. So I want to just name that again. And I want to say that this is a great time, everyone, to do your inner work. I feel like that is what is being asked of us, is to do the deep inner work. The world, the, the decks have been cleared, essentially, to do the work that is the most essential work. And not even work, the most essential, um, the deepest need. Because it doesn't have to be work. It can also be, it's the play of relationship. It's the, it's the dance of relationship. And this is a tricky time, I know, for people who are alone. And just know that, that you're held. You're held in love and that we are, we're all in this together. And, and I encourage you to keep your heart open and share what you have to share because uh, it's needed. So I look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out to me. Love to be connected with you. And oh, I just, oh, I will say I'm offering um, free meditations on Thursdays at five o'clock Pacific time where we breathe and move and meditate together. And um, yeah, I've been reading from my book on Facebook Live. So if you go to my Facebook page, Padma Gordon, um, you'll see recordings of things I've read from the book. Great. And we'll be sure to put the links uh, in the notes of the video. So check that out. Thank you so much, Padma, for your work and uh, congratulations on the book launch. And uh, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. Wonderful. So good to be with you, George. Thank you. Thanks. Okay.